Hello, painting peeps, and welcome. It's Kathleen from Cos Creations. Welcome to the No Bra Zone, guys. My happy place. I wanted to start this video out a little bit different. We are about to hit 20,000 subscribers. Oh my goodness, be still my heart, guys. Beyond grateful, over the moon, happy as can be, and so, so excited. Thank you so very much. I wanted to reintroduce myself to uh, the old painting peeps and the new painting tell you just a little bit about me, ask you a couple of questions, and then maybe give you a tour of my studio here that I am so, so grateful for. Um, I started this painting journey about a year and a half ago. I retired just over a year ago from owning a landscaping company in Northern Virginia, and I I worked my butt off. I worked very hard and partially because I absolutely loved it. I had great employees that had been with me from the start. They now own the business. I, I sold it to them. And uh, I just, I loved what I did. I worked outside. I made beautiful things happen in people's yards. And uh, I worked really, really hard. And then when I retired and Rick and I moved full time here down on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, you know, we, we got our house done and we got our yard done and everything was so much in place. And then I, I started getting a little antsy. I needed a way for my creative juices to flow. I needed to stay busy. You don't go from working your butt off to not doing much of anything, although it wasn't that easy for me. I know it is for some people. They long to be retired. They long to, to just sit and relax. Um, I needed to stay busy, so I started fiddling. I started fiddling with paints, and how it all started was I was making some Christmas ornaments and I had seen a video on YouTube about how to paint and pour over these glass Christmas ornaments. And I wanted to make all the ornaments for my tree because number one, I had the time to do it. So I watched a video and I prepared my glue all and water and my paints and I stuck a stip stick up in these glass ornaments and mixed up some paints and I, started to pour over the top of these ornaments and it mesmerized me. I watched as I turned those glass balls and watched those paints move. I thought to myself, oh my goodness, I should try this on a canvas. <laughs> and that was before I even knew that acrylic pouring existed. And then I started watching YouTube channels of some talented, talented people. My teach, Courtney Hauscher, Courtney Hauscher's art, Canella, Sarah Mack, Gilly Coob, um, Jilly Coob, I'm sorry, Jilly girl, um, Heather Mater, just so many wonderful people out there. Um, Melly D, and I watched, and I watched, and I watched, and I watched, and then I started to paint, and paint, and paint, and paint, and I, I messed up a lot of stuff, but everything I messed up, I learned from, and I took notes, and then one day it just clicked, and then uh, I started posting some things on Facebook, and people started to pay attention, and I thought to myself, you know, this is pretty cool, and then somebody dared me to post um, a video on my on a YouTube channel. And the reason I had videos is because I would videotape myself painting so that I could go back and reference it and remember what I did and and watch for my mistakes and and just learn from my own videos. So. Um, um, I reached out to Heather Mater from Heather Mater's Art, and she was gracious enough to help me learn how to edit my videos. She actually edited my 
my first video. So that's kind of how it started. And I still videotape. I videotape for me, but then I share it with you. I'm paying it forward. I'm showing and, and teaching you the things that I have learned along the way as others had, had done for me, which I'm so very, very grateful for. So. So there you have it, guys. That's me. That's what I'm all about. Um, I am grateful each and every day for the space that I have. We have a massive garage in our home because our home is raised up because of the floodplain. And um, our garage could hold six cars on one side and a boat and a couple cars on the other side. So my man Rick was gracious enough to share part of it with me. I saved my money put walls up, put a little uh, split air conditioning unit down here because it gets hot as hell down here in July and August. And I was tired of sweating like a hairy back man. So that's how it all, all has come to be. And once again, grateful beyond belief. So guys, I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll give you a little little tour of my happy place and then if there's time maybe we'll do a little painting. Glad you're here guys. Grateful for each and every one of you. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay well. See you guys. So guys, welcome to the No Bra Zone. Um, let me give you a little tour around. Let me kind of start over here. We actually have two sides. This side over here is um, still under works. Rick made that nice little rack there for me to hold my, uh, my frames and um, my canvases. And the plan for this side, there's our little barn door that we made, the back side of it. The plan for this side is to eventually teach. I have a lot of painting peeps that are close by here to me and I would love to eventually when things are safe again to get us all together do some painting this is the area <laughs> where I sit and noodle that's my little Maddie girl chair that was a chair that uh, my old black lab used to hang out in and I refused to get rid of it even though it has Matty Girl splooge on it and I sit here and I noodle and I think about what I'm going to do and uh, this is uh, where I kind of hang out with my finished paintings at least most of them are finished some of them need to be varnished some of them still need to be enhanced that's how I keep cool down here, my little air conditioning unit. I am beyond grateful for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, underneath these tablecloths on these two tables is where I dry a lot of my paintings to keep them safe from dirt and dust and critters and all that kind of stuff. These I'm experimenting with. I've tried a couple of new pouring mediums and I'm watching how they dry and the kind of sheen that they have left once they are dry. This is called uh, picnic netting. Um, they come in different sizes and these guys are terrific. They fold up like a little umbrella, but um, that's how I protect my paintings when I'm first done with them to keep um, the bugs and the dust and whatnot off of them. This little container right here, Walmart, $14.99. These handle my longer guys. I put them in this uh, Rubbermaid tub on some tiny little Dixie cups so that the air circulates underneath them. And I cover them up and I let them rest there for a couple of days. Then I slowly start to let air in to allow them to dry. I get very little cracking and issues because I slow dry my paints, paintings. This is where I hang out, right here. A lot of people ask me about this space. This is a washing machine tray. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot and then Rick takes these dowels and they, he cuts them to size for me. I lay them across this washing machine table and then my canvas goes on top and that's where I paint. 
This is my little setup. My camera goes up there. I've got lights that are shining up towards the ceiling to help eliminate a lot of the glare. This is a nice little work table I bought on sale at Lowe's and this is where I sit in my very messy painted chair. <laughs> you should see my shorts, guys. They could stand up in a corner on their own. They have so much paint on them. But Rick made that shelf back there for me and I have a lot of my paints there and I sit here and mix things up. Uh, pouring mediums and whatnot are over here. I've got this little cabinet space here that I store my um, my rags, my towels, and all that kind of stuff in there. So this is it. This is the happy place. This is where I hang out. And as I've said before, guys, I am beyond grateful for it. Thanks for being here. Let's get painting, guys. Hello, painting peeps, and welcome. It's Kathleen from Cos Creations. Welcome to the No Bra Zone, guys. We're going to be doing some painting today. I've got two 12 by 12 gallery wrap canvases down here, and then I'm going to do the same colors, um, but one on a black canvas and one on a white canvas because I couldn't decide, so I figured, what the heck? Let's do one on each. This canvas right here, I am out of my artist sloth flow acrylics in black and I sure do miss it because it's self-leveling I'm used to it I know exactly the consistency that I need so when we're out of things it's it's daunting <laughs> it's just daunting but we are gonna use our jilly girl paint on this side this is Montmartre acrylic colors and this is the lamp black and this is a very good value guys um, it's not super expensive it's just extremely thick and when you pour it in the cup it goes plop plop and I needed to, do, to add a bit of water to it and water makes me nervous I'm afraid I'm gonna put too much in and break down the binders and whatnot but I had to add a, a bit of water a few squeezes to get it to the nice consistency that I want where when the paint flows off the popsicle stick it leaves just a very subtle mound in the paint below so we are about one part paint to two and a half parts pouring medium on this guy and a few squirts of water in each cup this is our artist law flow acrylics in white and this is one part paint two and a half parts pouring medium and no water needed because this is not as thick as the Montmark paint. So there you have it. Let's talk about our colors today. They are yummy, <laughs> delicious, handsome, very, very pretty. So let's take a look at what we have here. We're getting our green and our blues on some yummy colors guys I just I could sit and mix and watch paint move all day long but if I did my man would leave me and I love him <laughs> and I don't want him to leave me so I come down here early kind of give myself an hour or two clean up and then we go about our day together because we like hanging out with each other. <laughs> this guy right here, I am digging these. I am digging all the paints that I'm using today. I want to give a shout out to Arteza, a shout out to Folk Art, a shout out to Art Alchemy because these paints are so delicious. They really are. And this pretty cup right here we have Arteza Acrylic Colors Premium, and this is the Pearl Pistachio Green. Now, these paints are beautiful. They need a little bit more mixing. It's almost like when you pour your paint in your cup, you add your pouring medium, stir it up. It's almost like the, the, the mecca or the the colors are in little tiny pellets and you have to mix and mix and mix until they mix up but 
I'm okay with that because it's so well worth it when I'm done. This is Pearl Cactus Green by Arteza, another very, very nice paint, guys. And these paints, I think, are 20% off at Arteza this week, so get them when you can. This is handsome, so, so handsome. This is Folk Art Treasure Gold Aquamarine. Now, these guys are a little expensive. This is $14 if you don't buy it with your 40% or 20% off coupon at Michael's, but their pigment is really good. They can handle a little bit more pouring medium. Although I did put just two and a half parts PM in all of these paints, so I don't confuse you guys. This is a yummy color. I haven't used this in a while. Deco Art Extreme Sheen Peridot. A lot of my paint and peeps out there really, really love this paint and get excited every time that I use it. Let me show you this one. Can you see the pearlescence? Can you see the color shift that's going on in this guy? This is pretty. This is Art Alchemy, and this is the Opal Magic. Good paints, guys. Just so little. They need to make them bigger. <laughs> and this is probably the closest color to the... Uh, no longer can have mysterious paint. This is Art Alchemy, and this is the Stormy Ocean. And when I mix this and put it alongside the mysterious that Gail from Life and Splatter sent me, it is so close. This one looks like it has just a little bit more pearl essence in it, and I'm okay with that, guys. Our final color today, in case we decide to do some swiping, is Amsterdam Titanium White. Now, a lot of people have asked me about this. Oh, that Amsterdam is supposed to produce lots of cells and this and that. Well, it does, and it does tremendously well if you have the Australian Floetrol. And I do not. Um, but when you mix the Amsterdam Titanium White with the Australian Floetrol, it produces glorious lacing, if that's what you're looking for. There's something about mixing that with the Australian Floetrol that makes magic happen. When you mix it with regular Floetrol, eh, the magic's not so intense. So, so some of you out there who are doing your bloom technique and using this, that Amsterdam White with the Australian Floetrol in a swipe is glorious. Um, I've done some really fun things with it, but that Amsterdam, excuse me, that um, Australian Floetrol comes in a very small container and I got it once and it's all gone. So um, I sure would like to get my hands on it again. So not sure what we're doing today. I'm going to fiddle with these colors, maybe do a little bit of swiping. My swiping tool of choice are cut up pieces of damp paper towel. And I'm going to do some slow motions with this for you guys because a lot of people are reaching out. How do you maneuver that paper towel? How do you do it? Well, in short, guys, when I am pulling this paper towel across the area that I'm swiping, you'll often see me kind of lift one side of it to bring it down to a point. Or possibly I'm trying to avoid an area that has a lot of interest and I don't want to swipe over it. So I maneuver around it a little bit. So I'll do some slow-mo in that so that you guys can see it. All right, Chatty Kathy, I am... Oh, oh, quick question, quick question, guys. Um, I did a tour of my studio. As you can see, I have a good amount of finished artwork. And the reason being is that I live in a very, very artsy area. Hilton Head Island and right outside of where I live, about eight miles away, is a little town called Old Town Bluffton. And Old Town Bluffton is famous for their arts and crafts and food festivals. And they have about four big ones a year. And um, I was preparing for one of those festivals to do my first, first art festival. And I was very excited about it. But due to uh, the yuckiness that's going on in the world, those art festivals are not happening. So I was thinking about doing an auction. 
but I first want to know if you want me to do that. And if you do want me to do an auction, what's the best way for me to do it? Do I auction off a piece at a time like others have done? Do I just tell you what's for sale? And I was thinking about just a set price per square inch. So I'm looking at for some advice from you all. What you think? If you join in, I'd, I'd hate to do an auction and nobody came. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so sad. So if you have any comments about that, suggestions, what you would like to see me do or if you're interested at all, please reach out because I would so be grateful for that. Enough talking, guys. Let's get busy. So 
that was fun. <laughs> I don't know which one I like better. This is a lot more dramatic. The cells are beautiful. Absolutely no silicone was used in these paints, guys. Um, this is soft. This is delicate. This is pretty as well. So I, I don't know. Let's let's go in for a close up. I just got to make sure I don't drip on the other painting. Get this guy up. That's pretty, guys. This is pretty, too. <laughs> so that was cool. That was fun. Black versus white. You guys let me know what you think. And if you have time to hang out, I've got some beautiful leftover paints here. I think I'll do a ring for and maybe a ring four with an additional swipe. So uh, hang tight if you guys like. Thanks for being here.